Today is a good day. Today is a good day. And whenever we hear or use that word good, we're looking for something positive maybe that would have happened to us or something positive that is going to happen to us. The word good is an adjective. Right? And sometimes when that word good is used, as I said before, it usually describes some sort of outcome. For instance, let me give you an example. If I say, well, Suzanne does some good cooking, some of us may be able to corroborate that story. So we are able to say, how are we describing her cooking? Her cooking is good cooking. And sometimes when we use that word good, when we use that word good, as I said, there is some sort of positive outcome latched onto it. So in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, it says that as Jesus was on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him and said, good teacher. I asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now we're not going to get into all of or why he called Jesus good, but I believe he would have seen some of the things that Jesus would have done and could only then be described him as good. The word goodness is mentioned about 50 times in the King James Bible. It comes from the Greek word, see how I pronounce this, agosone. And it goes just beyond doing good. It's not just about doing the right thing. However, it is actively choosing to be kind, to be generous, and understanding others, and showing understanding to others, even when we don't want to or have to. It is about going the extra mile to spread positivity and care. So when we talk about goodness, it is just more than just doing good, but is actively choosing to do something positive. So in the Psalms 23, a psalm that we grew up on and we know all too well. In verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. So we got two things that are going to accompany us in this journey called life. One is goodness and the other is mercy. We are thankful certainly for the goodness of God. No wonder the psalmist would have said, I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Has the Lord been good to you this morning? Can you think of any occasions where God has been good? Give me an example from, 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 from your experience. How has God been good to you? You got to church this morning. You know, there are some of us who, are not, who wanted to be here, but were not able to make it here this morning. Give me another example of his goodness. Yes, please. Give me it. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm.
Wow. You stole for on. Mm-hmm. Yes. God, amen. Yes. So we, we certainly want to recognize, you know, and these are, it's important that we recognize the role God plays in situations like these because they, it, it could have really gone south, right? So we certainly must thank God. Yes, you would be. No. Yes, amen, amen. So no wonder the word of God tells us to all give thanks unto the Lord, for he is, he is, and his mercies endures forever. Goodness and mercies, they are really their brothers, their twin, and they will go together and they will accompany you. You just have to trust in him. Oh, and taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Can we trust in God? Can we put our trust? You, you, you don't really want to put your, your, all your... You know, it's good to trust people. You, you, at some time, you've got to trust them. But you certainly don't want to put all your confidence in them. Because man can fail you. But God, he never fails. Amen. The word of God is in Psalm 25 verse 8 tells us that good and upright is the Lord. So we recognize that when it comes to goodness, God is there. The two go hand in hand. So when Sister Lovell, uh, and she comes up and she will always say God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. We need to really pick that sentence apart. Uh, something that we would have learned from when Reverend Ben Brown, I think it was, would have given, um, done an evangelistic crusade here. God is good all the time. God is good. So, whether we are up one day and he down the next day, God is still good. Because there are times when things may be going for us and we will be on top of the world. We got money in our pockets and we are in good health and we have friends and we got the ham to eat and all these things. God is good. But there are times when we don't have, when we don't know when the bills are due, when we don't know how we are going to make the next payment. When we think that people have forsaken us 
and that God himself is not there. But God, that is another time, but God is still good. It may not feel so, but regardless of how we feel, God is still good. So God is good all the time. And the flip side is that all the time, God is good. So the goodness of, not, of God is not tied to our circumstances or situations. So whether we are, as I said, up one day or down the next, God is still good. Goodness is an attribute of God. It is an attribute of God. The psalmist recognized God and his goodness. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his loving kindness is certainly everlasting. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, it says the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. It cares for those who trust in him. So, the goodness of God is just one facet of his glorious nature. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 19, then Moses said, I pray thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make myself, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show compassion on whom I show compassion. Now, as Sister Lover was giving her testimony about God's goodness, suppose things would not have turned out in her favor. Suppose, God forbid, that she would have lost her possessions, her house. Would God still have been good? God still would have been good. So it doesn't matter what we are going through or what is happening to us. God is still good. He's not only good, but he's certainly the source of everything that is good. It says in James chapter 1 verse 17, every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting sh shadow. So whatever you experience in your life, it is because of the goodness of God. There are times when we can become complacent and we let the blessings get the better of us. And we are there are times when we can forget his goodness. You know, sometimes when we, as people, sometimes you, you, you get things and things are happening for you. And you forget to give God thanks. You, 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 become, you think that this is something that should happen to me. And in fact, nowadays, when we spoil our children, we use that word entitled. When somebody keeps on receiving something and they have not worked for it, they seem to develop a sense of entitlement, meaning that even though they don't work or, or don't even deserve it, they feel they must have. And sometimes we as Christians, this can happen to us, but we don't want to fall into that. Beware that we do not fall into the situation. Beware that you do not forget the Lord, your God, by failing to keep his commandments and his judgments. Every time we fail to honor God with our lives and what we are doing, we are forgetting about his goodness towards us. We recognize that 
we are here because of his goodness, his strength that he has given to us. Our eyes could be shut this morning. But God said, no. There is still something for us to do. I want to show my goodness through them. And that is the reason why we are here this morning. This morning, I will call myself Plan B. There was a plan A, but plan A didn't work out. But plan B worked out. The goodness of God. We are reminded to be thankful for this good, for his goodness. When we look around, we are living in a time where people are becoming more and more unthankful. It seems that the more you give and the more you do, the more they want. But again, there's a scripture that reminds us that we are to enter his gifts with thanksgiving. And we are to enter his courts with and we are to be thankful unto him. And we are to bless his name. Once you recognize how God has been good to you, these benches should be full. So we can then gather that people are not here because they are not those who, will, I know I'm not talking about those who would like to be here, but cannot be. But those who are not here have not recognized the goodness of God in their lives. They think that because they have money is because of their job or because of their parents. But for me, as one who is quite technical, sometimes you may have a situation where something may not be working. But what we are seeing is just a symptom. But there is always a deeper or root issue as to why something is happening or what is not happening. It means then that these benches may not be filled because people do not recognize the goodness of God in their lives. But that's okay. We then have a job and our job is to point out to them that listen, God has been good to you. It isn't just the job that you have that is putting money in your pocket, but rather, at the end of the day, God is the source of everything. There is nothing that has been created or made that God is not involved. So as a result of all this, we are to enjoy then the goodness of God. You see, when God starts to bless you, since he's the source of all goodness and all blessings, there are sometimes blessings can be, can make people envious. But they don't recognize what you would have been through. They have not seen the nights where you have been upon on your knees. They have not seen the testimony or the testings that you have passed through. For you to be able to say, be thankful unto God and to bless his name and to raise your hands to lift up your, your, his name on high, they have not seen that. So and when, because you begin to do that, it says when the blessings go up, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. But yet you start to be blessed. All these wonderful things start to happen. And they begin to busy. Where would I come from? Would I like to doing drugs? Well, how is she looking so? Well, then clothes she wearing these days so look nice enough. You sit out here, do she got? <laughs> but they do not recognize that God is the source of all goodness. Brothers and sisters, don't be shaming your blessings. Show them off. You see them pretty shoes? Show them off. 
where the finery God has given you, show them off. You must show people that God is good. If you walk about with your face long and you're out touching the ground, people are going to feel that God ain't doing nothing for you. But God is doing for you. So you're going to wear a smile on your face. And you're going to lift your countenance this morning. For you are thinking that God has been good. And then just past thanks. But God is present thanks as well. God is good. All the time is God is good. And God is just present thanks. But God is also future thanks. God will continue to be good. So whether you give him thanks or not, God's still going to be good. For the way we behave and where we act ain't got nothing to do with God's goodness. God's goodness, he is still good. I'm glad that his goodness ain't tell you to how he behave. Because a lot of times we won't be in trouble here. But there are times they don't behave so good. <laughs> there are times, boy, you might tell me something and, and I feel that I don't deserve you tell me and some things might flow through your mind may, may cause you to question my salvation. But God's still good. Amen. God is still good. So his goodness is not tied to our feelings, our situation. In fact, when we examine that word good, and you take one of the O's out of good, where you got? You got God. So God and goodness, they go together. In fact, you cannot have good without God. Amen. God certainly is good. So be thankful for his goodness. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is everyone who takes refuge in him. The word of God continues to remind us, and you know, the psalmist would have shared his, there's a reason why he continued to describe God as being good. For he knew the many situations he would have found himself in. Like we are at times. But God was able to rescue him each and every time. There would have been times when he did foolishness. When he committed sin. But God still, because of God's very nature, God stepped in and rescued him. So this morning, some of you may think that you do not deserve his goodness. Or that you don't deserve his mercy because of how you may be feeling. Maybe because of some of the things that you would have done. But his goodness and his mercy is not dependent on what we do. But, it, but it's just simply because God loves us. So goodness and mercy. They're going to follow you all the days of your lives. Just remember those two brothers. Goodness and mercy will follow you. His goodness towards you is going to give you reasons to continue to trust him. It is going to propel your faith. When you recognize that God is your gyra. When you recognize that he is your provider, this should propel your faith. It should cause you to give a testimony about his goodness towards you. So my simple message to you this morning, let somebody know about the goodness of God. Let somebody know about the goodness of God. There's that song we often sing, the goodness of God. I, 
Worship team, you think you can handle that this morning? I love you, Lord. We're going to assist them this morning. And as we sing this song, I want you to think about all the things in which God has been good to you. And even if you can think about some things where God, you figure God should have come true for you, but he didn't. Remember that we serve a God who could see wrong corners, who could see wrong bends. And there are times when we can't see if we should get X, Y, or Z, but God can't see. So we need to trust him, the all-knowing, the all-seeing God who is able to protect us and who is our source of strength. The goodness of God.